Hey everybody, this is Brian, and Happy New Year. It is New Year's Eve. Uh, it's 2016 still, but in a few short hours it will be 2017. Whew, what a year. Every year I try to do one of these videos. Um, there's no code in this, but I'll be going over like what, I, what I've done and what I plan to do, and there's a couple little extra goodies. Um, so 2017, or I'm sorry, Jesus, 2016 has been a rough year for me. That may be point in case. I don't even know what year it is anymore. Um, if you remember last year, I got a new job, so I'm in my year probation, and they extended that to a two-year probation, not just for me, but for like a bunch of people, like pretty much everybody in the organization. Um, probation's not hard. It just means, you know, the job itself is demanding, and you're expected more because you're on probation, so I've really been working quite a bit. Um, also, went through a breakup, and I'm not going to use the internet as like my own therapy session, as some people do. But uh, it was it was rough. I'm not gonna lie. It took a long time to get over, and I don't know if I'm even fully over it. I don't know if anybody can fully get over something like that. So, um, as a result, I kind of lost all interest in the internet or coding or just anything. Um, it's slowly coming back now. Um, then, of course, we had the elections, which is God. This picture is just creepy. What is it? Hillary and Trump combined. <laughs> I'm gonna make that my wallpaper. That's kind of awesome. But uh, Love him or hate him, you know, uh, Donald Trump is the president-elect, and America will probably change, for better or worse. Um, some of these are just hilarious. Anyways, um, there's been a, a lot of debate about Trump, honestly. Who knows what's going to happen? But anyways, I've really been focused on the community. I mean, I kind of got disenchanted with programming and video games. I mean, I didn't even play video games for about three, four months. Anybody that knows me knows I'm always playing video games. Um, so I've really been just focusing on the community, getting Void Realms up and going. And we've got over a thousand members right now. I'm just astounded by that. Um, it just it blows me away just how helpful this is. I go in there constantly and I'm asking questions. And sometimes I'll go in there to answer a question because I'll see it on my phone. And by the time I go in there, four people have already replied. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, yes. Um, the TCP server, the high performance, blah, 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 blah. I actually did publish the code for that. I know a couple of you were asking for that, so it is out on Void Realms. So you just go to Source, go to the third page, or you can just search up here, and it is TCP High Performance Server, or also called Socket GUI 6 or GUI 6. Um, it's called GUI 6 because this is the sixth version that I've completely ripped this code apart. Let me see, do I even have this open? I do. All right, so the structure of the project, I've kind of changed around a little bit. I'm trying to make it a little more uniform. I've been playing around with the... Uh, the project files and how to structure things and working with includes, which is something I'm not the best at. Um, and I don't really see this in a whole lot of cute projects. Everybody just kind of throws it in the main. I like structure. I like things organized. So anyways, it's got the uh, TCP server and it's got all the source files in there. And then I've inherited and created an HTTP server and I've uh, used uh, siege and the actual siege command is right here. Um, you may have to mess around with your hard limits if you're on a Linux machine. Um, basically, I think you have like a maximum of 1,000 connections, so you may have to change that around a little bit. I'm on Linux Mint, and there's the directions right there. Um, I did actually pump this up to 25,000 connections, and it handled it just fine. Now, bear in mind, that's not 25,000 concurrent connections. That's just 25,000 connections. Uh, Siege was actually crapping out on me a little bit, so I'm probably going to have to write my own test suite for this. Um, let's see, what else have I been up to here? I've been, um, I did a series of videos before, and uh, it was about a motion detection system that I've been building. And let me just so you know what I'm talking about here. Um, this is the motion detector that I built. There's a, I think it's called a PRI sensor, a photo refractive inferred, I think. It's just a motion sensor, basically. In a cheap little plastic box, I bought a bunch of these. And I uh, put what is called a particle photon in here. And I wired it up to this motion sensor. So you've got your power, and then this is the data line right here. Um, and what this does is the particle phonon is like an Internet of Things kind of chipset. It, it puts it on the cloud, if you will. Um, they have their own cloud system. So whenever motion is detected on this bad boy, it goes into this little guy here. And the source code I wrote that lives and breathes on this thing will then do an HTTP GET over to a website that I built. And actually, let me show you. This is the finished detector right here. I've got a bunch of these sitting around the house. 
this one is very obvious, but most of them are very inconspicuous. You wouldn't even know they're there. Um, and it talks to a Yi2 website that lives on this little Raspberry Pi. Um, this thing is about the size of a credit card, and I've got the little Wi-Fi USB adapter right there. Um, premise being, when motion is detected, the motion detector will do an HTTP get to this website. This website then sends me a text message, and here's the actual website. And this is the actual Raspberry Pi right here. Um, I always love it when I do these videos and I put like my 119.168.121 on there and people try to hack it because they don't realize they're hacking their own network and they're just like, okay, really? So yeah, it's very simple, very easy. It's just three buttons, turn off, turn on, and auto. Um, off and on are pretty self-explanatory. It's like we turn it on and then motion will get detected because I'm sitting here talking away. Um, auto is a different type of feature. I'm building, where is it, where is it, an Android application. Maybe if I can get all this here. Um, this little guy is my very first Android application, so it's very rough, very non-professional. Um, but what this will do is it's got the off on auto, and then I've got some like test login and settings. Um, and what auto does is it starts an Android service that in the background does an HTTP get to the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is this little guy. And if you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it is just a embedded Linux system. I think that whole thing right there cost me like $35, $40. Um, it's like a 1.2 gigahertz computer. I'm probably horribly wrong on that. But it, you can do all sorts of stuff with the Raspberry Pi. It's a Linux distribution that sits on that. So you can even run Qt. You can run Python. You can run Apache. I, you know, Pretty much anything I can imagine I can run on this thing. It'll run a little slow because it's you know embedded. But anyways, this will do an HTTP get on a timed interval, like once every so many minutes or whatever. And what that does is goes into the people table. Like you can see, here's Brian's cell. New per I don't know, I was screwing around new personal device. I can get rid of that. But uh, point being, when I'm home and it's in auto, this thing is pinging away at the website and just doing these HTTP gets. So the system knows I'm home. But when I walk away, let's say I go to the store or something, it'll detect that I leave and it'll turn the system on. So the moment I walk out the door, if it detects motion, it says, oh no, Brian's not home and there's motion, something's wrong, and it'll actually send me a message. Right now, those messages are being sent via text, uh, just SMS text. Um, in the future, I'm thinking about, I, I forget, of course, now that I'm on the spot, I forget the name of it. I think it's like Google Cloud Messaging something, something. I don't remember, I'd have to look it up. There's a whole Google cloud messaging system where you can put things into either individuals or groups or um, you know topics. So you could subscribe to a topic, things like that. Uh, don't think this is gonna be a professional strength. I'm, I don't think I'm ever gonna build this and send it to market. There's already things out there like Secure Safe. Um, it was just a pet project. I wanted to do a little bit of Android, a little bit of embedded. Um, just kind of wanted to get into that sort of stuff. And I've done this similar before, but I've never done the Android piece. And this is much more streamlined now. And I had some bugs that I had to go in and figure out. And of course, it has logs and stuff. Like, you know, yeah, you can see living or bedroom, things like that. Um, last but not least, uh, something that I've really been thinking about doing is I've had a lot of feedback from people looking at the Qt tutorials. And they've been saying, hey, your Qt tutorials are great, but Qt's changed and they're now out of date. And I've thought about going back and redoing not the entire series but doing like a what I'd call a core series uh, or like a primer so that if you're just walking into Qt or if you're trying to follow the tutorials and they're just not working because Qt's changed or because I was an idiot and I just never did it right the first time it would be like a set of maybe 25 30 videos that would get you up to speed with the newest version of Qt very quickly I mean something you could do over a weekend um, I'd really want to streamline it um, I've also been thinking about getting back into doing videos in what I call the master series, quotey fingers around master series. Um, I don't consider myself a master of anything, maybe talking and wasting your time, but whatever. Um, but the master series would be different projects. For example, the motion detector system that I'm building. So it wouldn't be one language. It would be like an entire project from start to finish. So it would cover multiple steps, multiple phases, multiple languages. Uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the logistics of that because doing something of that nature could very easily take months and months and months of doing all these videos because I pretty much have to start all over again, type it in real time, and then edit and all that kind of stuff. So it's just something I've been thinking about. 
And I know there's a few of you out in the Void Realms group that have been wanting to work with me and do videos and things like that. I think there's like five of you out there. I'm not ignoring you. Life has just been really crazy lately. I have hardly had time to even vacuum my house. So bear with me. I will try to get there at some point. But really, that's it. I just wanted to wish everybody a happy New Year's, and I hope that uh, 2017, I got the year right this time, I hope that 2017 is very good to everybody. Uh, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys in 2017.